So we're going to start proximally and move distally, or if you want to say we're starting cranially and moving caudally, we'll start with the arteries, and this is the abdominal aorta here. As we move distally or caudally, we see this right here is the deep circumflex iliac artery, and it's a paired artery, one on each side. And in between them, we will find the caudal mesenteric artery. Now, the termination of the abdominal aorta are the two external iliac arteries and the two internal iliac arteries. Now, we will move from proximal to distal down the external iliac. The external iliac starts within the abdomen and will come down here and split into the deep femoral artery and the femoral artery. The deep femoral comes off, and then we have this branch, or usually the first branch of the deep femoral, which is known as the pudendoepigastric trunk. The pudendoepigastric trunk will then terminate as the caudal epigastric, which is this artery we see here running along the internal side of the rectus abdominis and the external pudendal artery, which will actually exit through the inguinal canal to come out to supply the caudal superficial epigastric, which will help to supply the mammary tissue. After that pudendo epigastric trunk comes off, the deep femoral essentially becomes the medial circumflex femoral artery. Now let's backtrack to our femoral artery. The femoral, as I just said, is another terminal branch of the external iliac. The femoral artery will leave through the vascular lacuna to exit into the pelvic limb. The first branch we see off of the femoral artery is going to be this branch here coming cranially and superficially towards the sartorius muscle. That's going to be the superficial circumflex iliac. Now if we look on the underside, just adjacent to this region, we see a very large artery coming off of the femoral and going laterally and caudally. This is what's going to be the lateral circumflex femoral artery. As we continue to move distally, we first will encounter this large artery here that is oftentimes coming off and going to the adductor and gracilis muscles, that's going to be the proximal caudal femoral artery. As we continue to move distally, we will next find this large branch that's going to be going down along the medial aspect of the leg, and that is going to be the saphenous artery along with the saphenous nerve. Now, in this region, we also tend to find this artery that's descending down towards the stifle joint, and that's going to be the descending genicular artery. The next artery that we oftentimes will see is this large artery here that's coming off to supply the semimembranosus muscle. That's going to be the middle caudal femoral artery. Sometimes there's one or two proximals, sometimes there's one or two middles. Either way, if you have questions, please feel free to ask so we can clarify. The final branch of the femoral artery is this very large branch right here, which is the distal caudal femoral artery. And it travels caudally back towards the area of the popliteal lymph node. After that distal caudal femoral artery leaves the femoral, the femoral will actually transition into the popliteal artery. At this point, the popliteal crosses along the caudal aspect of the stifle before coming cranially onto the area of the crus as the cranial tibial artery. The cranial tibial traverses distally down the cranial aspect of the tibia until it gets to the point where it crosses over the tarsus, and it's at that point that it transitions into the dorsal 
pedal artery. The dorsal pedal travels distally over the dorsal aspect of the tarsus, and the final branch that we will see here is arching from medial to lateral across the distal tarsus, and that's going to be the arcuate artery. From the arcuate artery is where we will get dorsal metatarsal arteries two through five. So those are all of the arteries and branches of the external iliac artery. So now we will move internally to the internal iliac artery, which we see coming off right here. The first branch of the internal iliac artery is oftentimes closed off, so we usually don't see latex in there. If you were to see latex in there, you would call that the umbilical artery. If, such as in this case, you don't see any latex and it's just a thick cord of tissue, that is going to be the round ligament of the bladder. The internal iliac will continue caudally and will terminate as these two branches, the smaller, more ventrally located branch, which is the internal pudendal artery, and the, more, the larger, more dorsally oriented branch, which is going to be the caudal gluteal artery. Now the internal pudendal comes off and moves kind of ventrally as it continues caudally. And the first branch off of the internal pudendal, since we have a male, will be the prostatic artery. The prostatic comes off at about a 90 degree angle from that internal pudendal. If this were a female, this is where the vaginal artery would be leaving the internal pudendal. The prostatic then gives off a couple different branches, including the caudal vesicle coming to the caudal aspect of the bladder, and in the male, the artery of the ductus deferens, which would be traveling along the ductus deferens themselves, which we can see here. The internal pudendal artery then continues caudally, will wrap around the muscles of the pelvic diaphragm, aka the coccygeus and levator ani, and it will exit in this area known as the ischiorectal fossa. So here we see the internal pudendal artery after it has exited into the ischiorectal fossa. The next branch we will see is this ventral perineal artery, which comes down towards the perineal region. And usually off the ventral perineal, we will see an artery going directly into the external anal sphincter, which is going to be the caudal rectal artery. After the ventral perineal artery leaves, the internal pudendal will continue as the artery of the penis in the male. Now, we have a couple different branches of the artery of the penis. The first one we're going to see is this large branch here that's going into the bulb of the penis. And that is going to be the artery of the bulb of the penis. The next branch we see coming distally down here towards the cruce of the penis, that's going to be the deep artery of the penis. After those branches come off, the artery of the penis will continue along the dorsal aspect of the penis as the dorsal artery of the penis.